Yeah, my work as a dietitian really has focused on nutrition in the childbearing years, so fertility, uh, pregnancy, postpartum. I got my start actually working with the uh, California Diabetes and Pregnancy Program, so I was really working at a small level, at the public policy level with the state of California, looking to improve um, diagnostic standards and intervention for gestational diabetes to reduce the burden on both the mothers and also their children. And it was when I was working there that I first learned the effects of gestational diabetes on children. When it's not well controlled, there's a much higher risk of them developing obesity and type 2 diabetes in their lifetime. And most of my talk is going to be talking about that, so I'll get into the specifics of it. But when I wanted to become a dietitian, I wanted to like reform school lunch policy because childhood obesity was such a problem and it must just be what they're eating, right? And learning that fact really is what lit me up and what has kept me in the field um, because we really have this very unique opportunity to intervene in pregnancy, and I'm going to also argue preconception as well, um, to improve the metabolic health of the next generation. Um, on the nutritional policy, the international policy, you probably are curious what my impact was. So um, a diabetologist in the Czech Republic was given a copy of my first book on gestational diabetes and they overhauled their policy. So they used to have uh, national guidelines that set a minimum carb intake of 200 grams per day. It's actually higher than the minimum level set in the US and they reversed it to be a maximum of 200 grams, um, and they have reported since a significant improvement in um, gestational diabetes management, less insulin requirements in pregnancy, and better um, maternal and fetal outcomes. So fewer pregnancy complications, um, less macrosomia, and, and so forth. So that's exciting. We'll see if that ever changes in the US. Um, I do have a new book coming out in a couple weeks Real Food for Fertility, you are the first people publicly to learn the title. Um, and I also train professionals. So at the Women's Health Nutrition Academy, we have one-off webinars with the Institute for Prenatal Nutrition. It's a formal, very intensive mentorship for health professionals. I'll kind of speed through this, but I first want to ask if anybody is familiar with the term fetal programming. Has anybody heard that before? Okay, a few hands, but not many. Okay, we'll get into that. Um, we'll get into conditions that can be attributed to fetal programming, and then we'll get into the specifics on how maternal health impacts uh, metabolic health of the next generation. And then because I'm really obsessed with micronutrients and nutrient-dense foods, um, I wanted to throw in just a couple little tidbits on micronutrients because vitamin and mineral levels also impact a child's development, maybe less directly on their metabolic health, at least from the data that we have, but certainly on certain um, congenital birth defects. So I wanted to highlight a little bit about that. I'll speed through this. Just don't copy my slides, that's all that says. Um, so fetal programming and epigenetics. Um, many of you are probably familiar with epigenetics, raise of hands. Yes, so our environment impacts the way that our genes are expressed. The old view is really that we just inherited our genes and if they were bad genes, so to speak, well, good luck, you know, you're destined to probably develop these diseases over your lifetime. And now epigenetics has really taken center stage and we do inherit, yes, our genes from our parents, but the expression of those genes um, really impacts how you know, our health uh, you know, plays out for our whole life. So um, really it's affected by like, all of it. Yes, the genes, also the environment, and even the environment um, that we're exposed to in utero. And by environment, that can be you know, circulating levels of nutrients and other metabolites, inflammatory, inflammatory mediators, um, toxins, and so forth. And if we extend this into looking into preconception, which I'll try to tie in as I'm talking today, these also directly affect egg and sperm quality. They also directly affect the development of the placenta. When we look at pregnancy complications, the most serious of pregnancy complications often have some sort of placental origin or involvement. And interestingly, I don't know if you know this, the placenta more highly expresses paternal uh, DNA than it does maternal. 
So there's actually some research suggesting, like with preeclampsia, for example, about 13% of cases are dad's fault, basically. So um, fascinating stuff. So in a nutshell, you didn't inherit the genes your parents were born with. You inherit the expression of their genes at the time of conception. And then those are the expression of your genes is further influenced by whatever exposures you have in utero, particularly during the first two years of life, but really your whole life. What does this have to do with metabolic health? So our metabolic health is largely determined by the health of our mitochondria. We've already had so many amazing talks on the mitochondria. I spoke about the placental um, you know, uh, development and sperm, but your mitochondria, you only inherit from your mom. Who knew this? Raise of hands. Okay, good. Um, so unlike nuclear DNA we, that we inherit from both parents, the mitochondrial DNA, we only inherit moms. The, DNA, the mitochondrial DNA and sperm is destroyed post-fertilization. So mother's health at the time of conception and during pregnancy is really, really vital for the metabolic health of the offspring. So the term fetal programming, which was not familiar with most of the audience, there's a lot of different terms for this, fetal programming, prenatal programming, in utero programming, but essentially it's top, talking about um, how in utero exposures can sort of program the expression of your genes and lifetime risk of chronic disease. There's a variety of theories. I'm not going to bore you with the specifics of them, but if you want to get in on like PubMed or Google Scholar and look into it, um, DOHAD I, I think is the one that's most commonly um, stated in the literature. And all of these, except the bottom one, these mainly are speaking to the effects of prenatal exposure. Um, the first thousand days hypothesis is really the first thousand days starting at the time of um, conception, so through about two years of life, and how that impacts a child's health. There's all of these like very specific time points at which genes are programmed and organs are formed that are really irreversible. We can't like rewind the clock and redo it, and those can permanently affect your health. No pressure to the parents of a childbearing age here. So um, what does this have to do with birth weight? <laughs>